Aaliyah, right? As the parent of my child, what rights do my parents have? Hmm. It has the court ruled? Okay. So until then, I do not want this woman near my son. I mean it. I mean it. Get out! You have now tuned in to my haves and have nots recap. Guys, be sure to subscribe if you have not yet done so. Also, be sure to share this video on Facebook, Google, wherever you like to share videos, Twitter, wherever, okay? Um, also, be sure to check out my other channel, which is Some More Love TV. That's where I have my love and hip hop, as well as a lot of other different recaps on there as well. Okay, so this one was pretty good. It had some good points, some good highlights, and I think this is the one before the season finale. So Wyatt, he has become the roommate's chick. You know, I like to try not to curse as much as possible, so we're going to call him his chick. So I'm like, dang, man. I mean, you can't be clowning Jeffrey now. You know, I, I think he might be a little more open to the idea now that, I mean, he's had a taste of the other side. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's not a laughing or joking matter, but it's just what it is what it is, and that's exactly what happened. Um, and he looks like he is like broken down, torn down, and things was not supposed to happen this way. He was supposed to be protected. So once again, Jim messes up. I mean, he thought he was teaching his child his child a lesson, and look what happens. It's like he can never do right by his kids. That's how I feel. Like he just f's them up more and more each and every time. First he lost his daughter. He could have damn near lost the freaking boy inside of the jail too. You know, I mean, come on. Anything could have happened. Because these people look like they didn't find out until the next day. So now the social worker, she asks Hannah about Candace and Kent. And Hannah just goes ham. She just tells her all these horrible things about her. She's a scam artist, con artist, whatever. And she cannot take care of a child. And I'm just like, you know what, this is unnecessary. For her to be telling this public person, I mean, this person, this type of information, it's just, it's not called for. And I feel like she was doing the most, she was doing too much. At the end of the day, those are things that you should touch. Unless you know she's really that bad, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, she would still let her see her grandchild. So I just think that, and especially because they're saying they need the parent to sign off to do this, to do that. And look what she's doing. She's messing up everything, making it look like she he really doesn't have any parents. Perhaps he would be better off in foster home. I mean, just because she's unfit doesn't mean you're automatically going to be the person that's going to take care of him. Especially because she doesn't have that much room in the house that she lives in right now anyway. So the DA meets with the criers and she's trying to find out what exactly it is that that um, Wyatt was trying to tell her when he said that he wanted to pretty much like confessed but they're being stern David and Veronica they're being stern Veronica's being a smarty pants and saying things like oh the house wasn't burned down accidentally it was burned down because I burned it trying to kill my husband and she said it with a completely straight face and you know she said it what like she tried to cover it up when everybody's like what are you saying what are you talking about she's like oh you know I'm just joke I'm just giving a stupid answer for a stupid question I'm like, girl, you are confessing. That's what you're doing. You lucky that Maggie was the one who helped you so you wouldn't have to end up in jail. Because if they would have kept on pressing it, they could have found out that it was actually arson. So now it looks like Veronica may have been the person that set up Wyatt. Because she makes a little comment like, oh, because they said, I think Jem said something like he was handling it or handling Wyatt because, you know, he's the one who got them all into that mess. And then she says that, yeah, that will straighten him up, being in jail. And they're like, how did you know he was in there? And she was like, oh, my husband told me. And he was the one, he never told her nothing. He looked at her like, what? But he kind of covered for her. But then when they got outside, he's like, yo, like he had a little talk with her. She's like, oh, you know, I've been, I'm basically saying that she got, she got connections everywhere. She knows everything. So I'm really feeling like she's the one that kind of made him really see what jail is like so that he would never want to be inside there with that guy. So next, Veronica, she tries to meet up with Benny, and Benny was going hard. I was like, dumb life? Okay, Benny, I see you, boy. 
He was on, on some, you're on depression right now. I can't even come. Don't be asking me all these questions. I'm not your man. I was like, well, hold up. Wait a minute. Benny is taking control. He's letting her know just because you older than me don't mean nothing. I got this. I'm the man. You know? <laughs> And you have to look it over at his mom, like, try to keep a straight face and not be showing who it is that he's really talking to. And Veronica, she was just like, she looked like she was liking it. Like, yes, take control, baby, take control. But you better not forget who's really the boss. I'll put you, I'll let you know right quick. But she was like, you know what, I'll play along because she actually had an agenda that she was trying to get fulfilled. That's why she wanted to see him so badly. I mean, she wanted to get something else filled, but she also had an agenda behind that as well. So what she actually wanted to do was to meet up with him so she can try to get the car back that, what's his name, that Wyatt had used to knock down a little girl. Because it's at the same place where he currently owns right now so she goes with a little lingerie and everything later on in the show and she seduces him right quick but she ain't even get nothing because he had to end up leaving anyway but he got some he sure did <laughs> candace arrives at the hospital after taking a jet from new york to wherever their location is and she just completely breaks down because to see how her son was in so much pains at the hands of his father as well as his aunt it just like was tearing her apart and her mom was just coming at her and saying, oh, who's that man? And she's like, yeah, who's that man over there? And she asked him, come over here, young man. What's your name? He's like, Oscar. She's like, what's her last name? Young. And she was like, how old is she? He said it. Where's she from? Like, you know, asking her all these questions to see if he really knew her or if that was just somebody that, was, that had flown a jet and brought her there. And he pretty much passed the test. And then she tries to go ahead and ask Candace what's his last name. Because she was just trying to find anything to try to show that her daughter's an evil person. But he's like, no, I'm here as a friend. I'm very fond of your daughter. And she's a very good person. She's just as passionate and strong as you are. Like, bam, gotcha. How you feeling now, Hannah? So yeah, to him, Candace, she ends up turning on her evil mode because she was good for a point. But then when she's seen that her mother is now trying to take custody of the child, she just kind of flipped into the, the crazy, evil, vindictive self that she can be. And she just says that she doesn't want her mother around her daughter, I mean her son at all, and until the court has some kind of ruling. But you know what? Hannah was like, you know what? At the end of the day, I'm going to go ahead and get my ammunition. And my ammunition is Jesus, is God. You know, I'm going to the chapel right now, and you guys cannot do nothing once I talk to him. That's what she was pretty much saying from what I was gathering from that. So, um, yeah, she, but Candace, I see, I understand why Candace is so upset because it's like her mom is just trying to throw her under the bus when she just rekindled things with her child, you know, trying to get him back. But then I also see Hannah's point in this too, because I feel like, I feel like Candace's life would have continued on even if she didn't find her son because it was continuing on. Although she was trying to kind of look for him, I don't think she was looking as hard as she should have. But I think that's the reason, too, why she's trying to get so much money and stuff so she, he doesn't have to have the life that she lived where she always wanted things, but because her mother was a maid, she couldn't afford them. But I feel like Can uh, Hannah is no better than her because Candace, didn't she get raped by her mother's boyfriend or something like that? So she, she's no better. Like You can't promise to give this kid the best life when you don't even have it yourself. You know what I'm saying? So... I see both sides of the story and the reason why they're so passionate about what they believe in. But I do feel like if, at least if Hannah was to keep him, Candace would be able to at least go over there all the time and be around him at all times because, but then again, the mother be acting funny, so you can't even promise that. So now Maggie Day, she tells David that she's going to take him to the secret rendezvous, the secret location. So he's like, okay, where are we going? But she doesn't want to tell him. While that's happening, who comes in? None other than the infamous Celine. She's trying to talk to Jim because he hasn't been answering anything. But he, David's like, just give it up. He's not here. That's it. He's fired you. And she's just like, oh, just like that. Everything is going down the drain. Okay. You're going to learn the day, boo. Okay. So she pretty much lets him know that, yeah, she's, she, she's vexed. And when a woman is vexed and she gone, you know something is going to happen. You know she's 
the wheels are turning and something is going to happen. Maybe she's going to do a, a, a conference, a press conference, something. Maybe. I don't know what she's going to do, but something going to go down. So, yeah. Besides that, Maggie takes him to Benny's new shop. And she's like, just wait. Out comes Veronica. She looks around. She goes inside a car. And Maggie's like, I didn't want to tell you because I didn't want you to think that I was trying to, you know, sabotage things or whatever. And he's like, oh, man. Like, he's thinking it's one thing. He's thinking that she's there because of the car to try to hide it. But Maggie's, in her head, she's talking and thinking about the fact that she knows that he's cheating. She's like, I've had her followed. But they're thinking two different things. And that's pretty much where it cut off. So what do you guys think is going to happen? Like, how do you think David's going to take this news? Oh, my gosh. I really hope, like, they showed a little bit of clips. I really hope he's just, like, lays down the law and just, like, lets her know, like, yo, cut this crap out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay fabulous, live free, and soar limitless. I'll see you in the next one. Later.